And I... we're back with more of the Pope on film. I spaced. <laughs> and oh, and I'm eating chips like a professional podcaster does during a taping of their show. Yes. Because I'm a professional. Um, so, like, I started Bigfoot and Wild Boy, and I was like, fuck, I didn't send the invite. I don't even have Zoom yeah. open yet. Yeah. It was funny. It's time, Bunny! It's time. It is yes. time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, it is time once again for all of us here at the Pope on Film Podcast to country line dance our way into the second half of our big show. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new low fat, no, well, some fat. Some fat. Uh, but it absolutely it's good, no. It's the good fat. Okay, it's a it's a ton of fat. It's a shit ton of fat. Yeah, it, 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 there's so much fat, fucking fat. A uh, movie of the week, and this week it's the finale of Buntober, our yearly celebration of all things bunny. And this year we are spending. Ending four episodes celebrating the life and films of legendary Spanish director Pedro Almodovar. But since we don't know Spanish, we're celebrating his career by watching 1950s monster movies. And this week, it's The Thing from Another World. And right off the bat, let me just say, this movie, John Carpenter's best. Yes. This and They Live. Kurt Russell is just absolutely amazing. And you know the the color picture and the setting you can you can see their breath, you can feel how cold it is, man, just terrifying, and of course, you know the incredible special effects of the uh changing of the thing, yes, because oh man, the original shitty thing uh they couldn't afford the shift the the like shape shifting, so they it was just like a tall plant creature. That one sucks. I'm so glad that we're discussing 1982's The Thing. I am 100% correct about this. Um, yeah, no, this is the Howard Hawks classic. What? From 1951. We're watching the crappy one? Crappy okay. one? This is an awesome movie. All things considered. All things considered. Yeah. It's great for an RKO film of its time. Yes. 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 Uh, well, before we get to this week's movie, let's talk about the man in question, Mr. Pedro Alamodovar. Here is a small biography of his life that yes. I myself have written. Now, I know that these past three episodes, I have just royally effed up the bio of Pedro Almodovar. I just keep messing it up. But uh, the fourth time's the charm. The fourth time's even more of a charm than the third time being a charm. That's what they say. That's what they say. They say that. Yeah. So... Uh, let's do this. Pedro Almodovar yes. was born in Spain in 1949. His wife, his father was a winemaker, and his mother invented farts. Yes. She was the first person to fart. At that the time, it was amazing. just, it was shocking. But you know how every time you fart, you've got to pay a penny? That's the fart tax that goes to the Almodovar family. Ah. Because Mama Alvadovar, doesn't it also sound like Mama Alvadovar would make great spaghetti and meatballs? 
Yes. Like meatballs that are like this big, like huge ass <laughs> meatballs. Um, Pedro Almodovar loves the cinema, and his first film was the Irish, highly controversial Spanish drama, The Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure. Yeah. And he followed that up with a television special that lives in infamy. I am, of course, talking about the 1970 Star Trek Holiday Special. Now, everybody yes. remembers the Star Wars Holiday Special, but not a lot of people are ta talk about the Star Trek Holiday Special, which starred Willie Shatner, Leo Nimoy, Telly Savalas, Tony Orlando, but not Don. No. And uh, Raymond Robert J. Klein. Johnson Jr. Yeah. Uh, Robert Klein, Diane Robert Cannon, Klein. the 1973 Miami Dolphins. Yes. Vicky Lawrence singing uh, Chuck Berry's My Ding-A-Ling. <laughs> and of course, Charlton Heston reading the 19... The 1972 book, Jonathan Livingston Seagull in its entirety. Yes. What an incredible special that was. It was an amazing, yeah. It really made you feel for the holidays. But something yeah. else about Pedro Almondovar that, that people do not realize is that he, he had a very rough time when he was younger. Uh, living under the Franco regime, he was forced to move to China to become a panda when he was 15 years old. Very sad. There was a lot of painful surgery involved. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and he, he lived as a panda up until... When up until Franco died in what was that like seventy two, you know, so very he sad. Spent like seven years as a panda. When Franco died, they brought him back to life, and that's where the term Franco Stein came from. Yes. Uh, Antonio Banderas got his start, his real big break in the movies of Pedro Almodovar. Fun fact, he is actually a Bigfoot from the fields of Mexico that Pedro Almodovar caught and shaved. Oh. Yeah, people don't know that. No. But, yeah, uh, Antonio Banderas comes from a long line of, of big feet. And also, completely unrelated, the edibles may have kicked in recently. Ah. So, I okay. uh, got that to look forward to. 1982 is the thing, though. That's a great movie. That is a great movie. Fucking uh, love I, that I, movie. Yeah, I, I, but... I would say his next greatest movie after that would be In the Mouth of Madness. In the Mouth of Madness, I like that. But the awesome thing job. is, but the thing is, man, I found this movie to be a weighted blanket. Yeah. I found this movie to be a wet sandwich. A wet sandwich. A wet sandwich. It's, it's, when I see this, all I see is a bunch of indistinguishable white men talking over each other. Yeah. Which I hate. This is why I never became a huge fan of the musical uh, The Phantom of the Opera by Andrew Lloyd Webber. I have a hard time paying attention when like four people are singing at the same time. Yeah. And I have a hard time when five different people are talking at once. Like they do in this movie, I have a hard time. Yeah, it's like, hey, this is you're in Antarctica, not Stars Hollow. Why don't you slow no, no. down they a little bit with your Arctic. dialogue? 
They were oh, on the say? other pole. Yeah. Fuck. But um it is interesting to watch 1951s. The thing from another world, knowing intimately knowing the other the thing from 1982 and seeing yeah. seeds of things. Fun fact about but, but, this but, but, week's but movie. This movie this movie gives gives the people what they wanted at the time. Here is the military. A woman brings coffee. You know? Yeah. And ship blows up. You know? There and is a I, creature. I, I, there is a creature, and the first instinct is, well, we gotta kill it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we gotta kill it. Like uh, I would there like... was never once any attempt to try to communicate with it, especially nope. since you know it is more intelligent than you are. Yeah, uh, I would like to give a special salute. To an unsung actor in this film. Yes. Robert Nichols. Which one was he? He was Mac. Mac. And his face looked familiar and his voice oh, looked in, familiar. So I looked movies. him up. He was Joe, the sidekick in This Island Earth. And be yours if the price is right. He was, he was like a, there was the, the, Thick jaw, deep voice, for the moment, uh, hero, and then right. there was the other mousy guy. Yeah, Robert Nichols was the mousy guy in This Island Earth, and apparently he was also the mousy guy in The Thing from Another World. And I looked him up. He was also in Escape from the Planet of the Apes, the TV show The Addams Family, Westworld. And I'm gonna funny. Have to look now. No, no, don't look. No. You're not allowed to look yet. Because um his final film was a 1993 comedy. Can you name it, Bunny? 1950s actor Robert Nichols from The Thing from Another World and This Island Earth. Uh -huh. His final film was a 1993 comedy. Can you name it? It was a tough one. 1993. It's a popular film at the time that we may or may not have discussed, brought up here on the show before. Uh... Ah, oh, 1993. It's so weird to see this man who did movies in like the 1950s and 1960s, and then his career tapered off in the 1970s. And then his last film is like, fucking, are you serious? This man went from the thing from another planet to blank? It was a popular 1993 three comedy if i tell you anything else yeah then that will give it away was was okay i keep wanting to say clueless but i'm pretty sure that was 94 yeah and i'm leaning kind of toward ed wood but you say popular i'm not sure how popular no. that was ed wood came out in 94 that was 94 we're talking 1993 Three. You're in the ballpark, but you haven't said it yet. This is a tough one. Do you want No. No, I can't I can't get the year. That was a that was a fucked up year for me. That was a bad patch of life. Did you freeze? You totally froze up. Froze up. But it's kind of a nice shot. 
It's got kind of a Mary Tyler Moore vibe. You're gonna make it after all. We're having technical difficulties. Trying to fill some time. Maybe I should play something over again. But it should be resolved shortly. God, that sucks. That's why I never, never won a Grammy. Never once. And that's exactly why. Well, let's check out that trailer again. That thing's alive, sir. I saw it. I shot it. I hit it. I know it. Something happened. It just kept coming at me, making a noise like a cat. I mean, it was awful. It was in those hands and those eyes. So you've got to do something about it. You've got Is it human or inhuman? Earthly or unearthly? Baffling questions. Astounding questions that not even the world's greatest scientific minds can answer. Gentlemen, do you realize what we've found? A being from another world, as different from us as one pole. We can only communicate with it. See? What happened, Doctor? In the greenhouse I was working, I couldn't see. Yeah. Then, then a blast of cold air, and I heard Olsen scream. Come here. Get in the corner. Now hold this in front of you. Stay by the light switch. 1.9. Needles hit the top. Double back was on you. Huh? I, I, I don't know what to say coming back into the show. Oh, in we're back. Instance. Okay, we're back. tell me we're back. We're okay, back. damn it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you you just uh, game grumps me. Um, yes, I'm back. I lost power, but now we're back. Hello. Hi. Hello. So, so I married an axe murderer. Yes. I hate that movie. Yeah, that was Robert Nichols' last film. Oh! Yeah, he went from this island Earth and the thing from another planet, the thing from another world, the thing from another world, to So I Married an Axe Murderer. He played the part of Scottish Minister. Isn't that something? Scottish he had a long Minister. Ass, yeah, he had a long-ass career that man i love i i don't like joel episodes of mystery science theater but i do love the movie this islander you mean like mike. their version of it you mean mike yeah mike okay. mike yeah no i hate the mike episodes of mystery science theater but i love their their uh, big budget movie where they rip on this islander. So I'm a big fan of Joe, the weenie sidekick from like what? the first 20 minutes of the movie. Big what fan of is his. going on with Mystery Science Theater anymore, though? I don't I know. I found it on Tubi, and they're like newer ones. Like they still have Jonah 
and but then they then so, sometimes they have this woman yeah and all the bots it's still the same bots but they all have different voices different voices yeah i'm 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 not a fan that what much anymore happened i don't know but uh fun fact about this week's movie the thing is almost a hundred years old because the movie thing from another world started out as a short story by author John W. Campbell called Who Goes There, which was released, pause for dramatic effect, in 1938. Yeah. Which means that the story of the thing from another world is nearly a a damn century old. That's crazy, right? That is pretty crazy. That's incredible that this story has been along for for so long. And also, the one thing that I love about this movie is that uh, one of the expedition people, the spookily named Doctor Voorhees, okay, is played by legendary Disney voiceover actor Paul Frees, who was both the ghost host in the Haunted Mansion ride at Disneyland and the narrator in the film Donald Duck in Math Magic Land. Oh, there's an oldie. Love that fucking movie so much. And let me tell you, it's so much better high. <laughs> Holy shit. I got super high and I watched that. And oh my God, I felt like I was melting. It was incredible. So it's really interesting to hear like a uh, boring white guy talking, boring white guy talking boring white guy talking <laughs> yes donald let us go to the wonderful world of mathematics yeah. you know and it's that definite voice of if you've ridden the haunted mansion enough and if you've been as obsessed with donald duck in math magic land enough you will rem know exactly which actor is paul freeze it's 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 awesome he was also the voice of uh boris badenoff yeah. Yeah. Paul Freeze. I'm a big fan of his. Bunny, why don't you hit us with the plot of this week's film, The Thing from Another World? Uh kind of some kind of military expedition, possibly a science expedition. I'm not sure what the fuck they were doing out there. But anyway. They just so happened to find a flying saucer embedded in the ice not quite sure because it was kind of like hey look what's that yeah they they dig it out of the ice and then accidentally blow it the fuck up yeah good job guys you know like yeah, yeah. There, there was a flying saucer but we kind of like Oops. <laughs> but they found yeah. a, they found an alien in a block of ice that they they brought back to the to their camp or whatever. Their camp. It was like one fucking big house. Yeah. There was not like another house that we were aware of. And they break the window so that the room would get cold and the ice wouldn't melt? Yes. I like, think. Like, what is wrong with, like, hey, let's just leave this outside. Yeah. No, so they had to break a window, probably because that... Because outside shots would have raised the budget or something. Probably. But anyway, it thaws out. It escapes. The creature escapes. First guy to, to contact the creature starts shooting at it and runs like you do. away. Like you do. Yeah. Yeah. And the creature runs away as well. 
And that is it. So now it's kind of like Jaws, okay? Where they're all talking about the creature and what they're going to do about the creature and all that about the creature. And every now and then, the creature pops up. Yeah. And again, nobody nobody says hi, offers him any hot cocoa. I mean, he's been frozen in ice, man. Warm him up. But he is he is a vegetable based yeah. life form. And the only guy who says So a Republican. Huh? Yes. And the only guy who says, hey, maybe we should try to communicate with this creature was the bad guy. Yeah. Was the bad guy scientist. Um, well, there's army guys. The, the, the token woman brings coffee. The scientist yeah. guy is evil. And then they kill the monster. Basically, yeah, yeah. That's the entire movie. Yeah. Um, I love the I, little plants, though. Yeah, yeah, that was cute. And then they find an arm. I like. I apparently, according to um, IMDb, IMDb, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, they had some close-ups of the thing in the film, but they cut them out because it just looked shitty. Yeah. So very much like Jaws. Yeah. So we're not going to show this thing that much, and we're we're going to take a long time before you really get a good look at it. Just like Jaws. Where it's like, hey, we've got this robotic shark. Real shitty, though. We don't want people to see it. Basically, that's the thing from another planet. Yeah. I, yeah, I find that the, fascinating. It, not one of the best makeup jobs in the world. Not bad, but yeah. There's only so long you would want to see him on screen, and then that affects the wear off. If they if they remade the if they made the movie the remake in the early seventies they could have just gotten Richard Keel. Yes. Uh, yes. Ego would have made a great the thing. Yes, he would have. Yeah, he would have been amazing. So, so that's all I've got for the thing from another world. Do you have anything, Bunny? Um. I, I like, like the ending. I like it. I, 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 it. It's a different movie than than John Carpenter's thing, you know. Yes, uh, but but it's it's fun. I find in its own right, and of course we it's, got it's fun. It's got its square jaw leading man, who is in mm-hmm. like this is like his third appearance. Yeah. During Buntober. During Buntober. Yeah. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. I look so freaking cute right now. Oh my god. You gotta see where you you gotta see where you froze up. It was perfect. I did. I did see it. It was was... Yeah. There's enough of a lag so that once it cuts off, I have enough time to Make it to Twitch and turn on the volume to see where I ended it. I do it every time. It's wonderful. It was like it was like a magazine cover shot. You know? Yeah. I was so close. Yeah. I was so close to uh ending to nailing the exit from oh, uh, Jeff on the other almost one? perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. I was no, I'm really close about to where nailing you froze. it. Were you froze? Oh yeah, no a idea. Great shot. Well, the but the, uh, yeah, you you only missed it by a couple of seconds. Yeah. Well, right now uh, there's a little bit of a lag because I am 
the power went out, so I'm using the hotspot on my flip phone. Uh oh. So um, there might be a bit of a lag right now between me talking and you listening to me and all that. Just FYI, it's because Damn of my flip morning. phone. Yeah. So, yeah. um, uh, that has been Buntober. It has been fun. I love discussing the movies of Pedro Almodovar, and I especially love talking about the films of Pedro Alm- Almodovar while not having to actually fucking watch any of them. Yeah. So that has been fun. The Beast from A Shit Ton of Fathoms. That was the original name of our first movie this week. Yes. Um. Oh, the movie Them was actually originally written by a guy in Queens, and it wasn't called Them, it was called Those Guys. Yeah. And then uh, last week, it came from outer space. That could also be a really good porn title. Yes. Just, I can already see that entire film. And now, the thing from another world. I think that this has been a fun Buntober. Yes, it has. It has been an interesting... But we we got some time to kill, so I want to bring up a couple of other things. So, yes, I've seen Bo is Afraid now. Oh, God. Oh, you did! Oh, my God! Let's talk! That's where um, I saw his penis! Yes, I... Number one, um... I am so impressed that in the 90s, I developed a crush on Parker Posey, and it finally paid off here in the year of our Lord, 2023. Is it, is it just me, or does Parker Posey and Elizabeth Banks look fuckloads alike? Yeah. I really have a hard time telling the difference between the two sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. It's the day of the show, y'all. <laughs> so, what were your thoughts about the giant penis monster in the attic? Uh, it's so far into the movie that by the time you get to it, it's just like, yeah, all right, you know. Yeah, okay, sure. This, this yeah. is pretty you consistent know? with the ride we've taken. I'm always amazed that an A24 movie where it's like, I really don't know what the fuck is exactly going on here, but it's still compelling as shit. Yeah. I loved the movie Bo is Afraid. I legitimately liked it. Yeah. And I think one of the reasons why I like it so much is I oftentimes let my anxiety and depression control me in a way where I'm not really in control of my life. My life is something that happens to me. And I feel like Bo is Afraid is is a movie about someone who is so full of fear and anxiety that the absolute worst thing happens. You know, when you're thinking like, oh, man, I'm going to mess this up, like the worst thing's going to happen. But then everything turns out all right. This is Bo's worst day. Yeah, but he also, but he also, in his mind, has everything blown so far out of proportion. Like, yeah, yes, I can accept you live in a bad neighborhood. I don't know if any neighborhood is this fucking bad. I mean, you literally yeah. have dead bodies laying in the street. I don't know. Bunny, have you ever been to Tucson, Arizona? (laughs) Yeah, that's what I thought. (laughs) I could use. I've been to the South Bronx, okay? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I fucking love Bo is Afraid. In the 80s. Jeez, Louise. I love Bo is Afraid. I think it was it, it it's it's a three hour fucking panic attack. Yeah. It and is it a nonstop stop. fucking panic attack, and I love it 
and the movie absolutely bombed and everybody yeah. was making fun of it but it's like i fucking love this film it's so weird and so bizarre and so often when you go to a movie because of the you've seen the previews you've read these reviews you already know everything that's going to happen in this movie but bo is afraid like you could read every review in the world and still sit down at that theater and have no fucking idea what you're watching yeah and and yeah. I, I yeah and i, I want to find out the deeper meaning of it all like the, the, like that picture of his mom was all made out of littler pictures of everyone who has been in the fucking movie to that point yeah Yeah, it's like wow, that's it's, that's fucked up. It was the why weirdest would, why feeling. Would, why would his mom have a little picture of the naked guy who stabbed him? Yeah, let me. It it was the weirdest feeling in the world watching Bo was afraid in theaters, and then when those silent credits start. People just slowly stand up confused and walk out of the theater. That was a wonderful feeling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be like if you're in an elevator and suddenly a raccoon falls through the roof on yeah. fire and then runs out. And now you're all like, what the fuck did I just see? I am so confused. I guess I'm getting out now. I'm a little yeah. bit high, and, and, and but, but there's still something about a lot. I still hate ghosts, but with a lot of the A24 movies, even if you don't know what's going on, they're just compelling. A ghost you story. Just have to, a ghost story. You don't. You you don't want to turn it off. You want to see what happens next. Yeah. Even if you don't know what the fuck ever any of it is, and these are the movies that also make me think, "Fuck you, Martin Scorsese, fucker." You know, get your fucking head out of your ass. Cinema is not just what you think it is. Yeah. Allow us our goddamn escapism superhero movies. By the way, have you seen the Marvels? Yeah. What did you think? I thought it was cute. It was cute? I thought it was I'll cute. I thought it was cute. fun. It, it's one of those Marvel movies where, like, you liked the movie, you didn't like the movie. There's going to be a mid or end credit sequence, which is going to fucking rock your world, and that's all you're going to think about. Yeah. Okay. But I thought the movie was cute. I liked it. Good. I it, It's... Well, Marvel as a whole is getting a lot of hate now. And Brie yeah. Larson has been getting a lot of hate for the longest fucking time. For the longest time. And I don't know why. Yeah. But, okay. I mean, I think, I think in general, Shit. while Marvel tries to be very progressive mm -hmm. and, and very diverse, they still don't come off like they like women very much. Okay, Go for it. we have about 55 seconds, but we've got this. That's the end of Funtober. That's the end of this episode. Next episode, we will be watching the 2022 Shudder original Christmas Bloody Christmas. Spoiler alert, a Santa robot starts killing people. All right. I'm kind of excited for it. But that's next week. Now that I look back at this week, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, the ins, the outs, I think it's been a pretty good episode. Don't you think so, buddy? It's been a damn good episode. I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Maylin, and on behalf of Bunny and Jeannie and everybody else, I just want to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week, you godless heathens. And you little kids adding things because they want to be in front of a camera. Do-do-do-do-do. Do-do-do-do-do. Cut! And a...